Hi everyone! My name is Selena and I'm a hackathon coach for Major League Hacking and a fourth year computer science major at Cal Poly Slow. My workshop today will be an intro to Adobe XD. One of the themes we have at Major League Hacking is learn, build, and share. So during this workshop, you'll be able to learn more about Adobe XD and UX prototyping, build low fidelity and high fidelity prototypes, and share those prototypes to get feedback. Let's dive straight in. Let's first define what UX prototyping is. It's the process of designing a detailed sample version of a final product, and the goal is to be able to test a prototype with users to get feedback and conduct experiments. Prototypes are not a final product, but rather allow for users to experience something close to the final product in a way that is highly interactive. For example, the interaction comes from something like clicking a button and having it lead to another screen. Prototyping generally comes before coding. This way, it reduces the back and forth between team members mid development and allows you to validate what works and doesn't work in your project. There's also a common misconception that in order to prototype, you need to be an artist or designer. This is not the case. It is absolutely okay to prototype and not be artistically inclined. Its main purpose is to give you an idea of how your product might look like and how users might interact with it without necessarily having the nitty gritty artistic detail. I personally don't consider myself a designer. I'm a lot better as an engineer, but adding prototyping to my process has been very helpful, especially when figuring out navigation between different screens or the decisions behind which buttons lead to where. For UX prototyping, there's a lot of great tools to use, one of which is Adobe XD. It's an application from Adobe that lets you design websites, mobile apps, and more. From those designs, you can create and share interactive prototypes with your team members across many different platforms. Super awesome product, right? Since we'll be using Adobe XD for this workshop, you can start to download at this link right here. While it's downloading, we'll cover the app idea that we'll be working on and build parts of the prototype that don't need XD. For this workshop, let's create a basic random number generator iOS app with four screens. I'll go into the app architecture in the next section, but at a high level, we'll keep the design as simple as possible, since we'll be focusing on prototyping instead of the visual detail of the app. Our target audience will be users with phones that would like to generate random numbers. Let's get into building. Before we get into building our prototype, let's define the two types of prototypes we'll be working with. First, there's low fidelity. These can be drawn on paper or digitally through different tools. They're helpful for visualizing your product as a rough sketch and do not contain user interactions. Low fidelity prototypes do not have to be pretty. Um, the most important thing is ensuring that your basic pieces of your design are there. High fidelity, on the other hand, is generally done digitally through tools such as Adobe XD. It's meant to simulate user interaction with a prototype as close to the final product as possible. They're helpful in collecting user feedback and performance. Let's also clarify three terms corresponding to this process. Wireframe, mockup, and prototype. Wireframes are the most basic way to show a design. It's essentially an outline and contains the main pieces of the content in the most basic UI. They're associated with low fidelity prototypes. Mockups are built from the wireframes and represent a product in a visual way, but without user interaction. It includes things such as color schemes and typography. They're associated with mid to high fidelity designs. Prototypes, like we've already defined, consist of multiple mockups and focus on user interaction. They're high fidelity. With those definitions out of the way, let's first make our low fidelity prototype for our RNG app. I think it'd be cool to have a home screen, a screen where you can input the number of numbers you'd like to generate, a screen where you can input your range, and finally, a screen displaying the generated numbers. Seems like it'll be a pretty basic RNG app, but we can iterate later once we get something going. With that, I'm going to start by sketching those basic screens on paper. Just as a side note, but sorry in advance for my really bad handwriting and not straight lines. First, we'll work on a home screen. It doesn't have to be too complicated, but let's have a title and a star button so that we can proceed to the next screen. Next, let's work on the screen where we can input the number of numbers we'd like to generate. I'm thinking that we need an input field for the user entering in the number, a title telling the user what they're inputting, a back button in case they want to go back to the home screen, 
and a next button so they can get to the next screen. For the moment, let's assume that the user wants to generate one random number, so I'll put one in the input field. Next, we have the screen where you can input your range. We'll need two input fields for the user entering a minimum and a maximum number for the range, a title telling the user what they're inputting, a back button, and an X button. For the sake of simplicity, let's also assume that the range is inclusive, meaning that the numbers they specify in the range will be included in the number generation. Let's keep it simple and have a range from 1 to 5. Finally, let's make the screen displaying the, the generated numbers. For this, I'm thinking we have a title that says your number, the number or numbers being generated, a back button, a button letting the user generate another number, and a button to allow the user to start over. Cool, looks like we have all of our screens down. Here's all the screens drawn out on paper. Now that we're done with the low fidelity prototype, let's work on the high fidelity prototype. We'll split this up into two parts, UI to determine how the app looks and behavior to determine how the users will interact with the app. Let's start with UI. Since we're doing an iOS app, we'll try to abide by Apple's design guidelines and use any official UI components they have. Luckily for us, Adobe has compiled a lot of great resources for helping us get started. You can find them at this link right here. On this page under the UI Kits tab, there's an Apple Design UI Kit that we can take. It links us to Apple's Human Interface Guidelines page, which essentially contains everything pertaining to Apple Design. If you scroll down a bit on the page, there's an iOS Design Resources download link. We'll grab the one that is for XD. We'll also need some Apple-specific fonts. Let's grab the one called SF Pro from this link right here. So once those are both downloaded, let's look at the folder of iOS Adobe XD files. There's two subfolders, one for production templates and one for UI elements. We'll be using the latter. Open up the file called UI Elements Design Templates Guides iPhone. There's a ton of stuff in here, from colors to fonts, from screen layouts to different buttons. There's a bunch of pre-made components that we can use in our designs. Let's start translating our low fidelity wireframes to high fidelity mockups, just so we can get the UI down. Create a new Adobe XD file and pick the iPhone option. All right, so let's start by making our home screen first. We'll want to make sure that we have the most basic parts of Apple's system covered, like the time, battery, the notch, and more. So let's go to the UI kit from Apple, find the guide safe area section, and copy the template called iPhone portrait status bar only into our file. We can use this as a baseline for all the other screens we're making. Cool, so according to our low fidelity wireframe, we have a title and a start button. Thankfully, Apple has assets for these. If you go to the Apple UI kit and look for the section called guide textiles, let's double click the largest bold black heading from the section called Textile center lined light. For the record, dark mode is great, but it'll be easier to design for light mode at the moment. Copy that into your XD file. We'll make adjustments to it in a second. We'll also need our start button. We can grab that from the section in the Apple UI kit called UI elements iPhone under the control section. At the top left, copy the button and paste it into your file. Cool, now we have both elements in our home screen. Let's edit the title to something like generate random numbers and make the button say start. In terms of placement, we'll center everything horizontally and vertically. Great, I think that looks good. Let's move on to the next screen. Next, let's work on a screen where we can input the number of numbers we'd like to generate. We need an input field, a title, a back button, and a next button. We can reuse some of the pieces we had during the home screen for the title and the next button. So let's copy and paste the entire screen to a new screen. Now, we'll need to grab an input field and a back button, which the Apple UI kit conveniently has. For the back button, it looks like the bar section to the left of controls has the back buttons underneath navigation bars. As for the input field, it looks like the controls section under UI elements has a text field for our input. So let's copy paste both of those into our XD file. Great. Looks like we have everything. Now it's time to arrange them on the screen. Let's also place the back button at the very top, as it's the standard for iOS design. 
Let's also edit the input field so it says 1, move it in between the title and the next button, and horizontally center it. Since the blue text field cursor is now off, let's shift that closer to the one that we just added. Additionally, I think this input field is a little bit long, so let's make it smaller. First, let's change the title to generate how many random numbers. So it looks done, but I think we're also missing something else. You know how you, when you're on your phone, a number keyboard pops up when you're about to enter a number? Let's add that to our screen too. It's under the rightmost section, UI element system. Great, I think that looks done. Moving on to the next screen. Next, we have the screen where you can input your range. We'll need two input fields, a title, a back button, and an X button. Looks like all these components are what we had on the last screen. So let's copy paste the screen we have so that we have everything from the previous screen. Let's first change the title to generate one number in what range? All right, so according to our low fidelity prototype, our range requires two input fields in a row and a two in the middle. Let's copy the existing input fields so we have two. Let's also grab the two texts from the Apple UI kit so we adhere by the standards. If we go to guide textiles again, let's copy the first body selection. In our file, let's change the body to two and arrange the input fields with equal space around it and then horizontally center the entire thing. Great, looks like that's done. Finally, let's make the screen displaying the generated numbers. We'll need a title, the numbers being generated, a back button, and two other next buttons. Let's copy the previous screen in since it has the back button, title, and next button that we need. We're still missing two components, another next button and the numbers themselves. Let's grab the unbolded title one from the textile section in the Apple UI kit for it. Let's also copy the current next button and paste it into the same file so we have two. Great, let's change the title, the number, and the text for the next buttons. Perfect, let's horizontally and vertically center all of that. Look at that, we just converted our low fidelity prototype into a high fidelity one. Now, because prototypes are made for user interaction, let's add some interactive components. Right now, they're just mock-up screens without any particular order besides the way they're ordered on the screen. If we go back to Adobe XD, let's click on the Prototype tab at the top. If you hover over elements, you can see them highlighted, but when you click on them, you see this blue arrow. This is the user interaction piece. Let's click on the Start button on our very first home screen. And since we want it to go to the screen where we input the number of numbers, we'll bring the arrow over to that screen. This is saying that if you tap the start button, it'll proceed to the next screen. Alternatively, if you click on this plus button right here, you can also insert drag interactions. But for the sake of simplicity, we'll just be sticking with the default tap interactions. Let's also add the tap interactions to the next buttons across the rest of the screens. We also have the back buttons, which go to the previous screen. Cool, so it looks like we have all the back and next buttons interactive. Let's go to the last screen where the number is generated. We have two buttons that don't have interactions yet. Generate again and start over. Let's have start over go back to the home screen. As for generate again, we'll want to generate again to generate a new number. So let's create an additional screen for that. Copy paste the current screen and put in a different number and link the generate again button to the first generated number screen to the second generated number screen. Looks like we have all the interactions done. If you go to the play button at the top right corner of Adobe XD, you can click through your prototype. Notice how you'll have to click on the specific linked component to proceed to the next possible screen. Great, looks like we have a finished prototype now. We went from sketching out a low fidelity prototype on paper to designing a high fidelity prototype on XD. There's a couple of improvements we can still make to this prototype, but I'll discuss them a little bit later. Let's move on to the share portion. 
Prototypes are more useful when we can share them with others for testing. If you go to the Share tab in XD, there's a Share Link section at the right-hand side. In order to ensure that you're not missing anything, select all the screens. Usually Command A or Control A does the trick. Press the play button and walk through the prototype to make sure it has everything you want. Give your prototype a good title, then click Create Link. You'll be able to grab the link above and share them with whomever you want. Let's get some feedback from someone. Oh, looks like we got some good feedback. We don't ever have empty input states for our input fields or any error states, so let's add those suggestions in. Let's start out with empty states. I'll set the opacity of the input text to 18% to make it look like it's a placeholder and move the cursor to the left of the placeholder number. Now, let's do error states. We can't have our app generate zero random numbers, so we'll use Apple's standard error and alert to tell the user they entered a number out of bounds. Now that that's done, Let's alter our user interactions. Great, now we have a final product, including our main screens and empty and error states. Here it is, previewed. We click start, enter in the number of numbers we want generated, but zero throws an error. So let's try again with one and enter the range as one to five, and finally get a generated number. Let's also generate another number. Then let's start the process over. Nice, we've got a basic RNG app done. You can access my copy of the final prototype at this link here if you ever want to reference it. During this workshop, we learned about UX prototyping, Adobe XD, building low and high fidelity prototypes, putting it all together with user interactions, and finally, sharing the link with other people. There's a lot more that XD can do, and I'd recommend checking out the XD resources page to learn more. It includes a bunch of great plugins and other UI kits to use. Additionally, if you're looking to learn more about mobile design, I'd recommend checking out the Apple design documentation that we looked through earlier or Google's material design documentation. There's a ton of components and design standards in both of them, and while you don't need much to make a successful prototype, it's always cool learning more about their specific ecosystems. If you have questions on UX prototyping, Adobe XD, or anything else related to this workshop, please feel free to tweet at me at Selena Sun. Hope you can use this process in your next project, and thanks for tuning in.